Coming up on NCC News, a surprising look at what you will find roaming free range on poultry farms these days. Avengers have taken over Cleveland and why it pays to be mean. Stay tuned. The stories and more coming up on NCC News. In the Ruben Aguilera. Hello, I'm Frankie Joseph. In our top story, a uh, Japanese student is presumed dead after a fall from Niagara Falls. Witnesses say the 19 year old was posing um, for a picture when she slipped. Stephen uh, D'Azouza has the story. She had one leg on either side, straddling this post. Carrie Wilson was with her husband here. She says she sensed something was wrong as she watched the student climb up to pose for a photo. I said to my husband, I said, I have a really bad feeling. We got to get out of here. Moments later, as the 19 year old Japanese international student attempted to climb back over, she slipped and fell straight down into the fast moving Niagara River and was swept over the falls. She was straddling the wall and she was hanging, hanging on to an umbrella at the time, and that may have had uh, something to do with uh, taking her off balance. The incident was caught on surveillance video. Police say there's no foul play, just a tragic misadventure. I said, it's that girl. I know it's that girl. I didn't see it happen, but I had a feeling. Officials from Niagara, along with Erie County Sheriff's and New York Parks Police, searched the river and gorge, but came up with nothing. The search is now a recovery effort. All along the railing, there are warning signs everywhere. But despite the tragedy, many tourists were still climbing up, trying to get a better view. Some think the park could be made safer. There probably should be more signs and maybe people standing there saying, no, get down off of the fence. But others think it comes down to personal responsibility. As people just go too far. You know, I don't blame anything on the park. I just think people wanted to get that extra edge, get closer, get closer. And unfortunately, things happen. Police say no changes to the park are planned. I, I've been in policing here for 35 years, and I, I don't recall anybody accidentally falling over that railing in, in my 35 years of service here. So it's it's pretty rare. Wilson knows she would change just one thing. I wanted to tell her to get there. Police have scaled back the search and are still attempting to contact the victim's family in Japan. WFC we'll flip a New England grandpa overboard, but thanks to fast-moving members of the Coast Guard, the man is safe. John Bragadi show us the dramatic rescue. It was uh, definitely a undertaking with the conditions at hand. Five to eight foot seas, pouring rain and poor visibility. This dramatic rescue seen from a Coast Guard helicopter, a man being pulled to safety. A 19 year old was sailing with his 77 year old grandfather when the older man went overboard about 2.30 in the afternoon off the coast of Centerville on the Cape. The grandson called 911. <laughs> And we're in the 36th scooter, and I have no idea how to steer the boat to turn it around to pick her up, pick him up. It didn't look good finding him. And then from this helicopter, Petty Officer Chris Saunders saw something in the water. So I was like, hey, sir, I think I saw something back there. Might just be a buoy, you know, maybe a crab pot floaty, but let's go check it out. And uh, we turned around, and as we got closer, that's pretty much what we saw it was a gentleman who had that red seat cushion. He was uh, waving it up pretty frantically. And the whole evolution from takeoff to landing was about 35 minutes. So. Uh, very quick. I guess he'd been in the water for about an hour before we got there, so uh, very lucky. Lucky he was wearing his life jacket. Then Hyannis firefighters headed out on the water to find his 19-year-old grandson. They found him in the 30-foot sailboat about a half mile from shore, and he didn't know how to sail. So they told him to drop anchor and hold on. Both men were wearing life jackets. In the case of the grandfather, with the high seas and the currents and the hour in the water, it likely saved his life. I can tell you, if they didn't have the life preserved on this story, but probably wouldn't have a, a happy ending. Lady Gaga is getting the holiday spirit with something for every little monster on your shopping list. Plus, Johnny Depp and reality TV mom Kate Gosselin have something in common. Michelle, Michelle Wright explains in today's Hollywood Minute. Lady Gaga is teaming up with high-end retailer Barney's New York to take over Santa's workshop. 
Gaga will work with teams of artists to transform the store's Madison Avenue location in New York City into a holiday fantasy land. For the Gaga fan on your shopping list, the special limited edition gifts will be available in Gaga's workshop or in the select Barney locations and online. Production is shut down on Johnny Depp's latest project. He was working on a Disney remake of The Lone Ranger. The company will not confirm rumors circulating about why the project was halted, but will say that everyone involved is meeting to discuss the next steps. According to The Hollywood Reporter, this setback raises the question about whether or not Depp will sign on for another installment of the blockbuster series, The Pirates of the Caribbean. Reality TV mom Kate Gosselin is also out of work. TLC announced it's canceling Kate Plus 8. The show, which was originally called John and Kate Plus 8, documented the Gosselin family's journey raising one set of twins and a set of sextuplets. During the run, John and Kate Gosselin divorced. TLC hopes to check in periodically with the family for updates. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Michelle Wright. When we come back, a surprise look at what you will find women free range on poultry farms these days. Stay tuned. One Northern Carolina town has earned a top honor. It has been named one of the best small towns in the country to live in by mag Money Magazine and town official on surprise. Because Louisville is just a wonderful place. It's a great place to raise kids. It's a safe place. We have wonderful volunteers. The business community is excellent. The residents. It's just, it's very, it's a very small town, home, lovable atmosphere. Here's a look at the city. Located northwest of Denver, the magazine praises it for the, its low crime rate and its highly ranked school and its reasonable home price. It's also cited all of the outdoor activities available to residents, such as scenic hiking, mountain biking, and skiing. And this isn't the first time Louisville topped the magazine list. It's also ranked at the number one best small town to live in back in 2009. Todd Applebaum is a New Jersey poultry farmer, but you won't find any chickens on his farm. That's because he raises ostriches. Every year, he brings hundreds of birds to market, selling their meat and eggs through the green markets of New York City for customers who want a lower fat alternative to beef and chicken. Richard Roth tells us more about this unique farmer. It's a typical day for Todd Applebaum on his New Jersey poultry farm. Come on, guys. Up, up, up but there's nothing ordinary about his birds. I've been in the ostrich business for about 15, 15 years. This is my passion. I, I like the challenge. Easy, easy. It's a challenge just trying to corral and tag one of these eight foot creatures. He raises three to 400 ostriches a year, many sold later for their meat. We'll probably sell close to 36 to 40,000 pounds of meat this year. Um, last year, I would probably say about 25. We're increasing every year. He sells primarily through New York City's green markets. We sell to restaurants and to individuals. We sell to uh, people who have had it in restaurants, uh, haven't been able to find it. And then you just have the adventurous people who are looking for an alternative meat. And while it's poultry, it's not just like chicken. It's a red meat that tastes more like beef. The loin. The loin. Yeah. Yeah, we cut that up. Into, that's the blend. My family, you know, my entire family, we went to South Africa quite a few years ago, and that's all we had. You know? <laughs> and it's so healthy, you know, and it's so tasty, and uh, we just loved everything about it. One New York restaurant specializes in cooking game meat, and ostrich steaks top the menu with its customers. The ostrich is pretty lean on very low on fat. It's like two, two three thirds less than the beef. And from my perspective, is to combine and try to balance some rich sauce with that meat to make a perfect dish. And this bird is good for more than just its meat. These are huge ostrich eggs. What's in it? The ostriches. An ostrich egg is the equivalent of 24 chicken eggs. One restaurant uses them to make its own pasta. We sell the fresh eggs for $30 a piece. Um, we sell anywhere between 25 to 50 eggs a week. Let's go up. 
A boat. Applebaum encourages other people to get into the business. I want more people to raise birds because I want more people to eat ostrich. Competition, there's no competition. You know, the more people that eat ostrich, it'll get onto more restaurants, supermarkets, that'll be, it'll help everyone. Next year, he hopes to double the number of birds he raises, but he won't count his chicks before they're hatched. Richard Roth, CNN, New York. Super Villain Week Harbor in downtown Cleveland. A couple walks down the aisle just a minute after getting engaged, and a little ring drive Texas kids crazy. The latest video and story that will have you talk about talking about are coming up now and take a look at this. Take a look at this, pure chaos on the streets of downtown Cleveland. This is actually a scene being shot for the upcoming Avengers movie starring Robert Downey Jr. Cleveland has been transformed into New York City, complete with Madison Avenue, 42nd Street, and the NYPD. Filming is expected to last through the end of the month. Ontario resident Sean Lippert proposed to his girlfriend of seven years on their wedding day. This is your wedding. Right now? You're going to be married today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have a dress, I don't have this. It was all here. Like we set it all up in one of the back rooms. Like my entire bedroom set was back there. Sean had been planning this surprise wedding for a year and had slyly been asking her about details she'd want at her wedding. He managed to get everything in place, including 207 guests. <laughs> a rare rain shower brought these kids some relief after a hot Texas summer. Their mother says the little ones just lost control when they saw the first rainfall in more than two months. They've been suffering in 100 degree heat. For Take a Look at This, I'm Bill Caiaccio. Coming up is what you have been waiting to learn and why it pays, it pays to be mean. I fainted at the sight of blood. Me, a nurse? I had no idea that's what I'd be when I went to NCC, but NCC is not like other colleges. NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. I'm so happy. Nurse Robbins, I created that. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. Planning to fly anytime soon? Well, the TSA has some questions for you. Passengers had adapted to the latest round of security changes. Officials at Boston's Logan Airport have added another layer. If it makes us safe, it makes us safe. It seems a little bit extreme, and I don't quite understand why there's that push to be more extreme when the times don't seem to indicate the need for that. As part of a pilot program, for the next 60 days, passengers in Terminal A will be subjected to a series of questions before passing through metal detectors. The questions aren't designed to be challenging. An agent might ask you who packed your bags or how long you'll be going for, and they say it's not really the answer they're after. Instead, it's passenger behavior they'll be monitoring. Anybody who indicates just the typical nervousness wouldn't be considered as any, any excessive signs of problem. So we're looking for people that exceed that baseline and if they exceed it with enough indicators, then we would subject them to additional screening. Longer, slower lines awaited passengers at Logan Monday as passengers tried their best in their new roles as interviewees. I wouldn't mind being asked. I already got asked when I came here, so I don't mind. But like when it's like this, it takes more time, so it's not very convenient. I'm a big, ugly guy, and they're going to ask me all kind of ugly questions. So if it makes it safe, it makes it safe. The next thing will be lie detector tests. Last winter was a rough one for us in New England. Well, guess whose turn it is now? Here's a weather story from the Southern Hemisphere. In the thrill-seeker capital, they're never stuck for a new idea. The challenge of snowy roads, no problem for this enterprising skier. On a day when abandoned cars sit everywhere. But most drivers got it right. It helps a lot with a lot of people having their chains on today as opposed to uh, yesterday there. So yeah, it's looking a lot better today. But it's not all good. With the highway closed to Invercargill for part of a second day, fuel and some foods are in short supply. Milk is being rationed. Milk must get through. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty challenging to be honest. I got some milk, uh, the bread's run out, so uh, I hope 
the wife will have to do some home baking. Despite the airport runway reopening, for some unlucky passengers, cancellations and delays continue. We're two days overdue now. We were due to fly out on uh, Sunday. Heading off to Mongolia, so fingers crossed we can make it to Auckland tonight. Ski fields did good business, but getting there wasn't easy. My car is stuck in Nevada here. For many businesses in the resort, the snow's just another challenge in what's becoming a difficult year. But they're mucking in. The council have got uh, enough on their plate, so you can see some guys next door and us are just chipping in to do our thing. So as some work hard to get rid of the snow, others are finding creative ways to use it. The biggest in 50 years or not, the snow's had a major impact here for three days. Most of us have wanted to learn a secret to earning more money. A new study has some information you might not want to hear. Are you too nice to earn the big bucks? Listen up. According to a new study, men who aren't as agreeable earn about 18% more or about $9,700 more a year than nice, than nice guys. When it comes to women, those who are ruder earn about 5% to or nearly $1,800 more a year than the kinder counterparts. The study of nearly 10,000 workers being presented at the annual academy of management meeting also discovered men who were described as highly agreeable were less likely to get the position. But previous research indicates meanness doesn't necessarily benefit companies. When civil conditions often mean higher uh, employee turn turnover and are bar for organizations as a whole. Please join us next time for more NCC News. I'm Frankie Joseph. And I'm Ruben Aguilera. Thank you for joining us and good night. If you thought your bank's debit points program was safe, think again. Another major bank cuts back customer rewards and its latest plans will coup profits. And a new search for a missing Maryland woman in Aruba has come up empty. We will give you the latest on these stories and more on the next NCC news. Please join us.